What's up all you Quantum Maniacs? I'm Daquan Young and today we present the 10 most savage taunting celebrations in sports history. Don't forget to subscribe to TPS and make sure you hit the bell and turn on our notifications and join the notification squad. And don't forget to leave your video ideas down in the comments below. We're looking and we'll give you a shout out in the video if we use it. Now, everybody loves a great sports celebration, but a lot of them are so repetitive. I mean, the NFL just finally started letting the players have some fun after years of penalizing them for major celebrations. In the majors, guys simply just run around the bases when they hit a home run. And in the NBA, there's too much scoring, meaning you can only truly celebrate ever so often. And in the NHL, you get a ton of fist pumps, but rarely anything excessive. But throughout the years, we've seen a handful of players go nuts when they pulled off a big play. Now it's one thing to celebrate out of joy, but everybody loves it when an athlete throws in a little dose of savagery and taunts the opposition in the process. Number 10, Jabba Chamberlain takes his own medicine. Former MLB reliever Jabba Chamberlain, who won a World Series with the New York Yankees in 2009, became well known for his epic fist pump celebrations. Now whether it was recording one strikeout or closing out an inning or a game, Chamberlain was someone who always got fired up and the man was just enjoying himself. In a 2009 game against the Baltimore Orioles, Chamberlain allowed a three-run homer to Aubrey Huff. Huff let it be known how pumped up he was by taunting Chamberlain, all while stealing his signature celebration gesture. And Aubrey Huff, you see that pump fist. Jabba Chamberlain does that when he strikes batters out, and Aubrey Huff just did it back to him. The Yankees went on to win the World Series that year. And you can't help but think Chamberlain fist pumped for hours in the team locker room after they clinched the fall classic. Number nine, Michael Rupp salutes Yarmir Yager. Former Pittsburgh Penguins superstar Yarmir Yager had many tremendous celebrations throughout his career, but none more memorable than the Mile High Salute. It was so popular that Bill Clinton even saluted Yager during a 2012 playoff game at Madison Square Garden. However, Yager learned what it was like to be on the receiving end of one of those salutes. Former Toronto Maple Leafs defenseman Danny Markoff saluted Yager once, but it was New York Rangers tough guy Michael Rupp who impersonated Yager the best. Rupp and the Rangers met the Philadelphia Flyers in the 2012 Winter Classic. Rupp scored a goal in the second period to cut Philly's lead in half. Here's Rupp with his shot, he scores! He does a Yager salute yeah. if you see that. I, I don't know that he was honoring Yager with that <laughs> yeah, salute. No, I don't think so. And he provided a memorable Winter Classic moment by savagely taunting Yager. Number eight, LeGarrett Blount mocks Ray Lewis's squirrel dance. Baltimore Ravens legend Ray Lewis had a signature dance he would perform during player introductions. Lewis, after all, was the ultimate team leader, and he became renowned for his legendary pre-game pump-up speeches. Lewis performed the dance in his final home game for the Ravens, a 2012 AFC wildcard contest against the Indianapolis Colts. And when the Ravens went on to win Super Bowl 47 in Lewis's final NFL game, he came back to MT&T Bank Stadium and performed the dance after making a grand entrance with the Lombardi Trophy in hand. The Ravens hosted the rival New England Patriots in week 16 of the 2013 season. Lewis was retired, of course, but it didn't stop Patriots running back LeGarrette Blount from taking a shot at the Baltimore legend. Blount scored a touchdown late in the game, helping the Patriots add to their big lead. Of course, he got in one more jab at the Ravens by throwing down a mockery of the Ray Lewis day. Number seven, Alexander Ovechkin's hot stick. Early in his NHL career, Washington Capitals franchise star Alexander Ovechkin developed a habit for excessive goal celebrations. As he's gotten older and more mature, Ov has cooled it off quite a bit. However, we're not gonna forget all those memorable celebrations, especially the savage ones. Ovi's best came during a 2009 regular season game against the Tampa Bay Lightning. Ovechkin netted his 50th goal of the season, and he pulled off the infamous hot stick celebration. Ovechkin's celebration earned criticism from hockey analysts, plus some Tampa players and coaches. Lightning bench boss Rick Tockett hinted that the two teams would get into quite the brawl next time they met, while adding he was disappointed with Ovechkin celebrating right beside the Tampa net. Ovechkin welcomed the idea of being targeted by Tampa players next time they met. He finished the 0809 campaign with 56 goals, leading the NHL once again. It marks the third time of his illustrious career where Ovechkin hit 50. Number six, Reggie Miller tells Spike Lee the Knicks choked. The Indiana Pacers and New York Knicks formed one of the NBA's most heated rivalries during the 90s. Reggie Miller and company met Patrick Ewing's Knicks in the postseason six times between 1993 and the year 2000. Yes, six times over an eight year span. 
We got plenty of classics between the Pacers and the Knicks, as Miller and Ewing went blow for blow throughout all of those heated playoff series. But no moment is more iconic than Game 5 of the 1994 Eastern Conference Finals. Miller went on a tear in the fourth quarter, scoring 25 points and leading Indiana to a crucial 93-86 victory in Game 5. Having dealt with some heckling from celebrity Knicks superfan Spike Lee all game, Miller got the last laugh with his epic taunt celebration. Reggie Miller giving the choke sign to Spike Lee, who again is staring in the direction of, yes, Batman. And the Pacers won the game, but it was the Knicks who rallied to win the next two games en route to the NBA Finals, where they lost to the Houston Rockets in seven games. But a big thanks and shout out to Lee and Miller for their epic back and forth trash talk. It led to one terrific and savage celebration after all. Number five, the Carolina Hurricanes go duck hunting. During the 2018 and 19 regular season, the Carolina Hurricanes made headlines by pulling off a bunch of over the top celebrations anytime they won a home game. They called it the storm surge. On one occasion, they brought out boxing legend Evander Holyfield to center ice to celebrate it. Hell, they even went bowling into the net once. But our favorite celebration, as well as the most savage one of all, had to be the duck hunt segment. The Hurricanes defeated the Pittsburgh Penguins in a shootout to pick up a huge two points in a tight playoff race. You know what that meant, savage celebration time. We're gonna go duck hunting. Now this is a video game. Some well-known hockey analysts such as Brian Burke and Don Cherry ripped the Hurricanes for their celebrations, but Carolina didn't care. If anything, the backlash only caused them to take their celebrations to another level of savage. Number four, Randy Moss moves Lambeau Field. There's a tradition among the Cheeseheads where some Green Bay Packers fans moon the opposing team when they're on the bus. It's funny if you're the one mooning, but if you're the one being mooned at, it's quite disrespectful. The Packers hosted the rival Minnesota Vikings in the 2004 NFC wildcard round. Minnesota led 24 to 17 with just over 10 minutes to go in the fourth quarter. And Moss came up with a big touchdown catch to put his team up two scores. But what people remember best is number one, Randy Moss's savage celebration. And number two, Joe Buck's iconic call of Moss mooning the fans at Lambeau. That is a disgusting act by Randy Moss. And it's unfortunate that we had that on our air live. That is disgusting by Randy Moss. To be fair, Mr. Buck, he probably wasn't aware of the Packers fans' mooning tradition. Moss was simply feeding it back to the Rowdy fans at Lambeau Field, and the Vikings won 31 to 17. But does anybody even remember the game itself? We just remember Moss's mooning and Buck's disgust. Number three, Jose Batista's bat flip. The Toronto Blue Jays ended a 22-year playoff drought in 2015 and won the AL East. They met the Texas Rangers in the ALDS, and after dropping the first two games at home, Toronto rallied to even the series on the road. That set the stage for an epic and memorable Game 5 at the Rogers Center. The Blue Jays trailed 3-2 in the bottom of the 7th, but managed to even things up. There were two on and two out for Toronto slugger Jose Batista, and he delivered with the biggest hit and the most savage celebration of his life. It went on to become one iconic bat flip, all right, which led to the birth of so many epic memes. Not only that, but Batista's celebration enraged Texas players, which nearly led to an all-out brawl. When the Rangers and Jays met in a regular season game the following year, Batista and Ruth Ned Odor got into a fist fight, which led to a bench-clearing brawl between the two teams. And we're pretty sure the root cause of it was Batista's savage bat flip, which is still heavily talked about today. Number two. MJ finger wags Dikembe Mutombo. Former NBA All-Star and four-time Defensive Player of the Year, Dikembe Mutombo loved showboating anytime he made a great defensive play. Mutombo would celebrate with his signature finger wag and basically said, no, 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 no. It was so popular that Mutombo even starred in Geico commercials where he would perform the block and say, no, 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 not in my house. That's a fifth floor problem. Okay. Not in my house. <laughs> but Matumbo finally met his match in the GOAT, Michael Jordan. Matumbo bragged that MJ had never dunked on him before, and it turned out to be a giant mistake. Matumbo's Atlanta Hawks met MJ's Chicago Bulls in the second round of the 97 playoffs. In game five, Jordan went straight at Matumbo and dunked right over him. And for bonus points, MJ pulled off the savage celebration by stealing Matumbo's finger wag. <laughs> 
a fresh after. MJ. Oh, oh he did it! Yeah. Hey, Michael shakes the finger, but he finally got his dunk on Mount Matumbo. Jordan's Bulls would go on to win that series and capture their second straight NBA championship in their fifth of the 90s. Number one, Terrell Owens celebrates on the Dallas Star. The Dallas Cowboys and San Francisco 49ers engaged in an epic rivalry during the 80s and 90s. Joe Montana and Steve Young helped the 49ers win five Super Bowls over those two decades. However, it was Troy Aikman and company that started a changing of the guard. They won three Super Bowls over a four year span, thus putting a halt to the San Fran dynasty. 49ers wide receiver Terrell Owens, the ultimate touchdown celebration sensation, taunted the Cowboys by celebrating on the Dallas Star at midfield. Later on, Cowboys running back Emmitt Smith scored a touchdown and celebrated by running the midfield and reclaiming the Dallas Star. But Owens would score another touchdown and go back to celebrate on the special spot yet again. But he had no idea what was coming his way this time. Yeah, he's, there's going to be a penalty on George T because he's going to clock him. Now Teague's going to be kicked out of the game. Unfortunately for Owens, his actions didn't please head coach Steve Mariucci. T.O. was suspended for one game by Mooch, who was quoted as saying, it disturbs me when the integrity of the game is compromised in any way. Owens had more epic touchdown celebrations after that one, but none of them were as savage as what he did to the Dallas Cowboys and their beloved logo. Now, which do you think is the most savage sports celebration of all time? Join us in the comment section below. If you liked this video and learned a thing or two, clicking the like button helps us out a ton and we truly appreciate it. If this is your first time coming around to TPS though, subscribing is a great idea because we put out videos like this every single day. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.